Hello everyone, welcome to Wind Down Friday. Today our special guest is uh, Jeff Haynes, co-founder of GAN Systems, a pioneer in the field of GAN technology. He has joined now at QPT as a advisor. Hi Jeff, how is it going? Hi, very well indeed, thank you. Thank you, thank you for, for your time. So let's start, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, um, c- could you share more about your journey in the field of GAN uh, transistor? You have a great, a long uh, career. And what motivated you to focus on fast switching power converters? We talked during uh, our podcast at Power Up. And uh, how did your time at GAN Systems contribute to your expertise? Well, it starts a long time before my time at, um, at GAN System. It's been a long journey, starting in a train carriage with a battery, some fuse wire, and a torch bulb 68 years ago. I've always been fascinated by joining things together to create something new. I've also been very lucky to be in the right place at the right time, working with the right people throughout my career. I first met John Roberts, one of my two co-founders at GAN Systems, 55 years ago, when we were both students on a work placement at the Marconi Oscillator Division. John convinced me after that to join him at Marconi Microelectronics, where I worked for Dr. Steve Forte, who went Mm -hmm. on to run General Instruments and then AMS in Europe. Designing and applying MOS integrated circuits at Marconi started a career that included Microsystems International as an applications engineer, Harris Semiconductor as a technical sales manager, working under Jim Dykes. He went on to be the first CEO of TSMC. And then came a complete re-education from Jack Gifford and Fred Beck at the age of 40 when I joined Maxim Integrated Products pre-IPO and started to understand what business was really all about. The share options there eventually made it possible for me to rejoin John Roberts in a series of semiconductor startups based on technology spun out from the National Research Council of Canada. The last of those was the best and came about because John and my other co-founder, Gervin Patterson, discovered that the GAN transistors they wanted to use in Class D audio amplifiers were already being manufactured for radiation hard RF applications in spacecraft and the National Research Council. Our previous successes, spinning out strain silicon technology for SIGI by CMOS integrated circuits, convinced the NRC to support us again in the venture that became GAN Systems. In fact, I've learned more, far more, about the real world of GAN transistors since retiring from GAN Systems in 2015 when 13 of the 20 finalists in the Google Little Box Challenge used GAN transistors. I joined the 12 University UK Virtual Research Centre as industrial champion with a prize for researchers sponsored by GAN systems, EPC and analogue devices to explore the massive opportunities for using fast switches in real systems. Sadly, The greatest advantage of the GAN transistor is that it's different. It might look like a MOSFET, but it's not. It's a hemp. It can switch large currents very fast and very efficiently. To gain its true benefits, its package must become part of the active electrical, electromagnetic, thermal and mechanical model of the system. To make the most of this potentially perfect switch requires a rethink of circuit approaches packaging and system architectures. So talking about uh, uh, the future of GAN, because now we are seeing a lot of uh, research and development, a lot of new devices. What are your ex- expectations, aspir- aspirations for the future of GAN transistor and their contribution to reducing uh, CO2 emissions? That is a nice topic on a global scale. It certainly is. Clearly, electricity is the most efficient and flexible form of energy. The world's growing dependence on electrical energy for all forms of power means that we have to use it and convert it as efficiently as possible. More than half the world's electrical energy is already 
being used to drive motors. Mm. Increasing the efficiency of those systems by even a few percent can make an enormous difference. My colleagues at TTPI are spin out from Nottingham University working with a large US pump manufacturer have been able to save as much as 60%, 6 or 0% of the total energy being used in a papermaking plant by simply replacing a fixed speed motor by a variable speed drive embedded within a submersible pump. So apart from your job, Jeff, your professional, uh, outside the, of your professional lives, do you have any uh, hobbies, personal interests that you are passionate about? Oh, I certainly do. I'd list them as music, family and travel. I played the trombone when I was at school. My sons and I started an internet music business together. Good. My eldest son's family now lives in New Zealand. And my wife and I now enjoy traveling to there, to jazz concerts, swing bands and orchestra events. Nice. There are any books, writers, authors that uh, have had a significant impact on your professional lives, so leadership style or, or mindset, mindset? That's, that's a sad subject. I'm a very slow reader. It's been a major impediment for my career development. It's been compensated by the good fortune of learning from the wealth of career mentors that I've had. Do you stay informed about the, the latest trends and developments in, uh, in this industry? So are there any trends that you find uh, particularly exciting? Fortunately, my slow reading has been more than compensated by the rise of vid vid video presentations. And I just soak up the enthusiasm of my now much younger work colleagues. And uh, so, in conclusion, Jeff, any upcoming projects, initiatives that you are particularly excited about? So what's next from Jeff? Embedded manufacturing seems to be an essential development for fast switching power conversion. I believe it'll be a great enabler for QPT's high-speed motor drive modules. I also believe that new fast control systems for novel modular architecture conversion systems will emerge to further address the power density and efficiency of all types of power conversion systems. TTPI are already demonstrating soft switched automotive DC to DC modules, exhibiting a tenth of the weight of contemporary silicon solutions. And I think somehow we have to come together and put the pieces of that manufacturing value chain together, working as a team to create the things that really will reduce the CO2 that we produce. Nice. Jeff, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for coming on at the Wind Down Friday. Have a good weekend. See you next. Thanks for the opportunity.